Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm bringing you along as we're moving into week six and seven of the Baby Gaps Diet, introducing solids to our baby using Dr. Natasha's Gaps Steps. So in weeks six and seven of Baby Gaps, Dr. Natasha recommends to carry on with all the previous foods. So that's kind of the overall theme of these weeks, six and seven, is really just making sure that we're continuing all the foods that we've added so far and then increasing those. So at this point, every day he's having some meat, some cooked vegetables, and then on a regular basis, not every single day, but on a regular basis, I'll give him some avocado. He's having his meat stock that I give him in a bottle with some sauerkraut brine for liquid probiotic food. He also gets a raw egg yolk in there. I also add some melted fat. He usually gets lamb tallow. And then for amounts for meat stock, he is getting about three to four ounces of meat stock a day and a teaspoon of sauerkraut brine. And then for the fat that I add to that, which is usually lamb tallow, I just add just a tiny little bit. It's probably like a 16th of a teaspoon. And then there's, of course, there's fat with the meat stock itself, so he gets just some additional fat that way. And again, if you want to see step-by-step step how I make those Gaps baby bottles with the meat stock, sauerkraut, brine, egg yolk, and fat, I have a whole video where I show exactly that process, so I'll have that link below so you can check that out as well. And then some of you might be wondering about the fruit, the cooked apples that we talked about in the previous video. I'm still just really going super slow with fruit. I'm wanting him to just get a really good solid foundation of the savory foods, the meats, the vegetables, cultured dairy, fermented foods before adding fruit. I just, with my kids, I don't rush with fruit and I find that it works so much better for us. So that's just what we're doing. We'll gradually kind of add that in a little bit later when I feel like he's ready. But right now he's really enjoying everything that he's having. So one kind of interesting thing that happens around this stage for my kids is that they are fine with being spoon fed the purees for a while and then always at some point around this this time they start to not be interested in the spoon and become very interested in feeding themselves and at this point he's really hit that he really isn't interested in being spoon fed but he does really want to feed himself so what i've started to do rather than pureeing the vegetables and spoon feeding it to him and pureeing the meat and organ meats and feeding that to him I am putting everything on his tray. So I have very small little pieces of soft cooked vegetables, making sure to not do anything really spicy. He gets the mineral salt, some onion, garlic, things like that, but I don't do any spicy spices. I don't do pepper. If they're milder spices like herbs, then as long as they're nice and mild, then I will include some of those if they happen to be cooked with the meat or something, but he doesn't get the herbs themselves. I hope that makes sense. Just kind of making sure to not cook his meat that he's eating with anything that would be too spicy or or too much for his digestive system at this point. And then for the cultured dairy, we're doing kefir. Dr. Natasha talks about yogurt and then like in one of my previous videos, we decided to just go ahead with kefir with him because he had already been exposed to it. He did well with the whey and just introducing that slowly. So we're going into kefir. Just our family has kefir on hand for the most part. I don't usually make yogurt and kefir at the same time just because yogurt is a lot more powerful and I can only keep up with so many ferments going at the same time. So he's doing kefir. So the way that I've been doing that is giving him some on his tray, just in a little pile, and then he'll eat it with his fingers. He actually really loves it. So on the topic of cultured dairy, Dr. Natasha says to increase the amount of homemade yogurt or sour cream or kefir. And when I give him the kefir, I try to give the creamiest portion of it. So it is like gap sour cream, you know, kefir cultured cream. So she says increase the homemade yogurt or sour cream, or in our case kefir, to three teaspoons with every meal. So that's just like a nice goal amount to have in time, in, in mind as you're doing this. And then um, she says you can start adding it to your baby's juice and water in her bottle. So whenever we do the fresh pressed juices, add a little bit of the kefir cream to that. He's not drinking a lot of water at this point because he's still nursing a lot and then of course getting his meat stock, but whenever he has water, that's a good chance to add a little bit as well to that. 
and then gradually increasing the raw egg yolks to two a day. So he, at this point, has been so far worked up gradually to one egg yolk a day. So now is the point to start transitioning to two egg yolks a day. She also says to work on increasing the meat intake. So again, I just follow his lead, how much he's interested in and give him as much meat as he's interested in. Another thing that I will give that I forgot to list when I was listing all the different foods that he's having is, well, I did say meats and organ meats. So I just wanted to give a little more detail, I guess, about the organ meat part of that. So I will make pate on a regular basis, at least once a week, and we'll eat that. And then, so I give him some of that as well. I just put it on one of his spoons and then he eats it off of there. He really enjoys that too. And then Dr. Natasha says, if the baby is on formula, she says at this point that you can stop formula completely. And she says, if nursing, then carry on. And he's nursing and we definitely plan to continue that for a good long while yet. So that is where we're at in week six and seven of baby gaps and how we're, you know, doing it practically here in real life. All right, I hope that you found that interesting and helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Be sure and check out the blog post. As soon as I have that up, I'll have a link to that down below where you can go see the full written version of this whole entire process over on my website. Be sure and check out the description box also to links for free eBooks and other goodies, as well as my programs that I have for coaching people through the GAPS diet. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else that you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.